In today's video, we're going to be reviewing the Tokina 100mm 2.8 macro lens. Welcome back to the channel guys. But if you're new here and you enjoy content about photography and videography, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe and turn on your notification bell as I'm constantly putting out new content each and every week. I purchased the Tokina 100mm 2.8 early on in my photography career when I wanted a macro lens at an affordable price. I found this lens through Theoria Apophasis, who some of you may know or wish you didn't as the angry photographer. Regardless of your thoughts on him, I'm glad that I found this lens, as it served me well even with all of its quirks and imperfections. This lens comes in at $400, and as of the making of this video, Tokina has released a newer version of this lens, but it seems to have just given its original lens a modern facelift, but doesn't offer anything new in terms of features and performance. If you compare this to the Nikkor equivalent, which comes in at about $900, the Tokina 100mm costs less than half the price of the Nikon 105mm 2.8. You will notice that when I review lenses on this channel that are considered to be budget friendly, I am trying to provide entry level users with the ability to capture images images in the way that they would be able to with more expensive models. This isn't to take away from the quality of build and potential image quality of the expensive brand models, but to shine light on lenses that will get the job done. Let's talk about the build. The Tokina 100mm is definitely a uniquely built lens compared to other contemporary lenses that I've used during my time taking photographs. One thing unique to Tokina's lenses is the clutch mechanism that they use for their autofocus switch. The focus ring on this lens doubles as a switch between the autofocus and manual focus modes by simply sliding it forward and backward. When the lens is in autofocus mode, the focus ring isn't responsive like it would be on your other lenses and spins without any traction. When in manual focus mode, the focus ring allows you to continue rotating the barrel until it's reached its limit. Speaking of limit, this lens also has a dial on the side that allows you to switch between the limit and full modes of this lens. If you're going to take portraits with this lens, you would want to keep the lens on limit mode, as it keeps the lens out of macro focusing ranges. When turned to full, you can utilize the lens's 1 to 1 macro ratio and get in nice and close for some amazing shots. As a wedding photographer, this lens is my go-to for all of my ring and detail shots. With this lens, the closer you get to that 1 to 1 ratio, your minimum aperture will also be increased, starting at the native 2.8 at infinity focus, but working its way up to 5.6 at its closest focus at the 1 to 1 ratio. In most cases, if I'm getting in that close with this lens, I make sure to be in plenty of natural light, buy a window, or have a speed light handy just to add a little bit more light into the environment. This lens, as is usual with third party lenses, doesn't have any weather sealing and is made up of mostly plastic. So like I've said before about third party lenses, make sure to take care of this thing when you're out in the rain and snow. This lens does sport an aperture ring, but it must be locked at f32 in order for it to work on your DSLR or mirrorless cameras. I love this addition as it allows me to use it with my Nikon FM2 and use it to capture some 35mm detail shots and portraits with a super sharp lens and creamy bokeh. Let's talk about the autofocus. The autofocus for me is where the Tokina takes its share of bad hits. As I rarely use this lens for portraits and lean more to the 50mm to 85mm range for those types of shots, this lens has one purpose for me and that is to capture macro photographs. In normal limit modes, the autofocus does well and gets the job done consistently. I've rarely had any issues with it, snagging photos during a ceremony where I needed the extra focal range due to the location or a session where I decided to get some 100mm portraits, getting them perfectly in focus. The place where the autofocus really struggles is in the macro settings. When I first got this lens, I would sit there and watch as my subject went in and out and in and out of focus. I would end up getting frustrated and just resort to using manual focus. The one upside to that is it allowed me to get really proficient in using manual focus to get the shot if my autofocus ever failed and as I looked into it, most macro lenses fail in this way. This isn't a bad thing, it's just something that doesn't make this lens as appealing to someone who is starting out and doesn't really have the confidence to go from autofocus to manual focus just like that. The other thing to note about the autofocus is that the autofocus in this lens has to be the loudest thing I've ever heard in a lens. You would swear there was a Hemi underneath the hood of this thing. Let's talk about the image quality. 
the thing that originally sold me on this lens was the ability to capture such sharp and crisp images for such a steal of a price. The compression you get on 100mm just really helps flatten the image while creating beautiful separation between your subject and their background. The bokeh on this lens is super clean and probably one of my favorite things about the image quality on this lens. There's pretty much no distortion on this lens except for a little bit of soft edges while it's wide open, but other than that this thing is amazing. Check out a mixture of my macro and portrait shots to decide for yourself. The image quality is great, but the one thing that you will battle with when it comes to this lens is something that Tokina lenses are known for, chromatic aberration. With modern software, this isn't really that big of a deal, as it can easily be corrected, but I know that if I don't mention it, I'll get the pixel pinchers in the comments below asking me why I didn't address it. The aberration isn't too terrible, but enough to have to adjust things to get things lined up correctly. Let's talk about the pros. The pros for this lens definitely live in the image quality that it produces. With tack sharp images and creamy bokeh, you can't complain about the quality of image that you get with the Tokina 100mm. I actually enjoy the clutch autofocus mechanism that I mentioned earlier, as it just gives this lens a different feel to using it than any of my other lenses. This lens also performs amazingly when using it for my intended purpose, which is macro photography. To know that with a 1 to 1 ratio, you can literally capture something as small as the sensor on your camera makes this lens extra appealing. Now let's talk about the cons. Now the first con, which I haven't mentioned yet in this video, is the fact that the autofocus on this lens doesn't work with the FTZ adapter, meaning that if you're shooting on a Nikon mirrorless camera, be prepared to use this lens in manual focus. As I use it primarily in manual focus, this isn't an issue for me, but if you plan to use this to capture portraits on your Z cameras and want to be able to rely on autofocus, you will need specific adapters that work with the lens's internal focusing motors. While talking about the focusing, it makes sense to bring up the fact that there is poor autofocus when using it in macro mode. Another con would be the chromatic aberration that appears when using faster apertures on this lens. Again, this could easily be fixed in post, but if you are looking to have minimal work to do when post-processing, then I would suggest against this lens for you. Are you a fan of the Tokina 100mm 2.8, or do you prefer the Nikon 105mm macro over it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And again, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.